This is Twit. Hold on, I think I hear something. It sounds like there might be a buzzing outside of my window. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, it's an Amazon delivery drone. That's right, folks. Amazon is one step closer to uh, completely putting me out of my misery for such horrible jokes, but they are also <laughs> one step closer to uh, letting the letting folks get their deliveries via drone because they have received approval from the FAA for drone delivery. Uh, I am excited to say we have Paris Martineau from The Information here to talk to us about it and, you know, Amazon in general. Welcome, Paris. Thanks so much for having me, Micah. (laughs) Yeah. So let's start with this. Uh, When we talk about clearances and approvals and and other words, uh, depending on the group, uh, depending on the, the agency or the organization, that can mean different things. When the FDA clears something, it doesn't necessarily... Uh, mean as much as an actual approval. So when it comes to the FAA, uh, let's talk about what FAA approval means for Amazon and its drones, kind of an overview of it and and what that actual like substance, what what are we getting out of this? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I think the first thing to know here is that this doesn't mean that uh, there's going to be drones from Amazon buzzing outside your window starting (laughs) next week. What it really means is that Amazon has received approval to be able to um, test its drones in customer delivery situations and be able to fly them with packages beyond um, line the visual line of sight, which is a very important terminology in the drone and FAA world. Um, previously, without the certification, the program was kind of frozen because – you were not allowed to essentially take the drone anywhere beyond where its operator could see, which obviously kind of causes some problems for the whole unmanned delivery vehicle sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So that, that makes sense because I I think that, you know, that, that distinction that you're kind of talking about there is incredibly important when we, we talk about, you know, me, if I were to go buy a drone tomorrow, um, which don't worry, I'm not going to, but uh, if I were and I'm flying it around, I've got to be able to see where it is and move it around in that space. But obviously, Amazon, uh, if it wants to do this delivery service, it doesn't really help if it's got to hire people that are using this controller to drive the drone around into different places and watching it as it goes around. So, This is a little bit farther along with the process, but do we know kind of, I know Amazon is a little bit unclear about uh, the the true state of its drone program, but if you had to sort of uh, read the tea leaves and guess, how long do you think it is before I could actually order something from Amazon and, uh, you know, noted that I'm here in California near a big city where Amazon typically does these programs first. So uh, other places may take a little bit longer, but are are we five years? Are we four? Are we 15? How long until I've got that drone buzzing outside my window? (laughs) So I think this is actually the most interesting part of the drone announcement is that let's say best case scenario, albeit I'm obviously reading the tea leaves here, as you said, but it, from what I have gathered, um, speaking to sources and whatnot, it doesn't seem like even in an ideal world that this drone program is not going to be used to have deliveries happening in places like New York, where I am right now, or California, outside big cities. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's important to view this announcement kind of within the context of Amazon as a whole. Right now, they're on this massive push to expand um, delivery stations. They've opened over 100 in the last six months. They're going to have more than 400 by 2021. And delivery stations are these little post offices, essentially, but just for Amazon packages that service everyone in a 30-minute drive radius. And it makes it so that Amazon can hire contractors or prime people to bring your packages. But that will work for most cities and towns and populated areas, but where that won't work is sparsely dense or sparsely populated regions or rural areas. That's never going to be able to be serviced in that way. So from what I've gathered, it seems that Amazon 
ideally would end up using the drone program to kind of make up for the gaps in its delivery network that are specifically in these kind of rural, hard to reach areas. Because right Uh now, the only way that it's going to be able to reach those is to pay the postal service who has to deliver packages to every house, even if it's a 40 acre farm in the middle of Montana. Um, but Amazon would prefer to be able to control it by itself. So if it could use a drone, it'd be much more cost efficient to reach all of these sparse places. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, So let's talk about drone safety. Uh, One of the things (laughs) that that kind of intimidates me about a drone, uh, I can remember a fellow co-host here on the network, Ant Pruitt, had a drone with a camera on it and he was kind of showing it off and uh, testing it out. And those propellers get to spinning and they just are very frightening. Um, did did the FAA's regulations and, and clearance involve the considerations of the drone in terms of how it impacts humans on the ground? Or is the FAA's clearance more just solely about the airspace? And, and if that is the case, then is there some sort of uh, agency called, I don't know, the Federal Finger Agency that is uh, making sure that we don't <laughs> slice our fingers whenever the drone comes to us. Kind of what about that part of the safety considerations? Does the FAA have anything to do with that? Yeah. So, I mean, Amazon originally announced its intentions to launch a drone program in 2013, I believe. And it said, oh, it would be up and running within like five years. The reason why it's taken so long to even get this first step of approval is that The approval process is very long and complicated specifically for these sort of reasons because there are so many possible safety concerns involved from both a people on the ground as well as airspace aspect. So in order to get this kind of first level of approval, Amazon has had to go through rigorous safety testing with its drones and uh, just the whole program as a whole. This clearance means that they're going to be able to continue doing the testing, but in the realm of deliveries to actual customers. So that'll kind of um, provide this second testing ground to double check that all the things that seemed safe in these more controlled situations are actually going to be safe in these uses. Gotcha. Sort of going from an alpha stage to a beta stage. Uh, The other thing that I'm wondering is where does Amazon fit in the larger... (sighs) Other companies that are doing or are looking into drone delivery or, uh, you know, I think of there there was a company not too long ago that was talking about drone delivery for medications uh, to rural or uh, to, to places that otherwise would not be able to be serviced. Is Amazon the first company in the United States to get this far? Are there other kind of drone, I I know that, you know, there are other drone clearances, but in terms of actual delivery, where does Amazon come in? And are there other companies that we should be keeping our eye out for, uh, both sort of online and in the the skies when it comes to drones? (laughs) Yeah, you should definitely be keeping your eyes towards the skies when it comes to (laughs) two companies, at least. Um, uh, Wing, which is owned by Alphabet, aka Google, um, was the first kind of drone delivery company in the U.S. to receive any sort of FAA approval um, for commercial deliveries, as well as UPS last October received the same kind of approval for the FAA. But the process is just very long and complicated for all of the companies involved, even Amazon and these two others that have received this first stage of approval, just because the FAA has really never had to deal with something like this before. And the complexities of having unmanned aircraft that say, will need to be updated or have software changes really doesn't jive well with their older model of regulatory approval. So they've kind of had to rebuild new structures and systems to even get this far. And that's kind of part of what's slowing down the process. Although hopefully things will get easier as uh, they are streamlined. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to uh, to reiterate what you mentioned there with Alphabet Wing getting FAA approval. That happened last April 2019, not 2020. So that happened, you know, more than a year ago. And at this stage, as far as I know, anyways, we're not really seeing Alphabet Wing drones flying around in the sky yet, which tells me there's a lot of of stuff that has to happen post this step. What are some of those hurdles that Amazon's going to have to overcome before they can finally do this? I mean, even if you just 
look at it from a simple kind of logistical perspective, putting aside the regulatory hurdles and whatnot. I mean, these drones that Amazon was approved for can only really carry up to five pounds at a time. And given safety concerns and just the general likelihood of people, if you're flying a drone over a city to maybe, I don't know, hit it with a slingshot or something, I feel like in (laughs) cities it's going to cause a lot more issues. There are very limited places where this sort of technology can be safely tested and very limited amounts of things that can be delivered because it's under five pounds. And there's not that many use cases where it makes financial sense to, okay, yeah, let's use our very expensive drone program that's in its infancy to do that instead of just handing your envelope off to the postal service. But I think that something that I find very important or helpful to keep in mind when thinking about these sort of programs coming from Amazon is that Amazon's a company that when it comes to stuff like drones or delivery bots or healthcare or things like that, they are a company that is thinking like 10 or 20 years in advance with almost all of their decisions. So these moves that they're making now aren't possibly going to be something we see in the next year or two having uh, like real world noticeable effects, but it's going to be something that maybe in a decade or two will have a huge impact on some way that they're doing business.